Could artificial intelligence one day be able to read the human mind? Can big tech get inside our heads? Would new technology allow us to send text messages, simply by thinking and by typing directly from the brain? It would be crazy amazing if silent speech and brain reading would one day become a reality. However, there's one major impediment, it could lead us into uncharted territory. Especially if we allowed tech companies to access our private brain information. That is what would happen if big tech were able to identify people's thoughts. This would prevent us from protecting our brain data, free will, and mental privacy. Let alone our faith and personal beliefs. On the other hand, what if artificial intelligence played a role in redefining our belief system? So far, this technology has been promising to remake the world. But what if it attempted to include thousands of years of religious text and traditions within its algorithms? What if artificial intelligence intervened in the divine essence of the human soul? In other words, what if Google became a search tool for people to find God? Seek the answers to these existential questions in this video. I'm Majed Tefor and this is my YouTube channel Eldorado. Artificial intelligence researcher Shannon Borcher, a former Microsoft general manager, is pursuing a study on artificial intelligence and spirituality at the University of St. Andrews in Scotland. He is examining the relationship between spirituality and technology. For that, he's programming a series of artificial intelligence devices to understand how they could one day transform the way society thinks about what he refers to as the big questions of life. I read about his quest in an opinion column written by Linda Kinstler, a doctoral candidate in rhetoric. The column was published by the New York Times. According to Kinstler, tech is a secular industry. It is full of doctrines, from rationalists to techno-utopians and militant atheists. Many technologists seem to prefer to consecrate their own religions rather than ascribe to the old ones. In doing that, they're discarding thousands of years of humanistic reasoning and debate along the way. But that's not the only problem. These technologists are actively involved in the research and development of advanced artificial intelligence. Therefore, their beliefs, or lack thereof, filter into the technologies they create. And their problem is that they regard traditional religions as sources of subjugation rather than enrichment as atavisms rather than sources of meaning and morality. So, why would they need God when they've got Google? Over the past several years, research has exposed the racist and discriminatory assumptions baked into machine learning algorithms. The 2016 presidential election in the United States of America, and the political cycles that followed, showed how social media algorithms can be easily manipulated. Even today, Advances in artificial intelligence are transforming labor, politics, land, language, and space. Rising demand for computing power means more lithium mining, more data centers, and more carbon emissions. Sharper image classification algorithms mean stronger surveillance capabilities. All these can lead to intrusions of privacy and false arrests based on faulty face recognition, on top of a wider variety of military applications. And as artificial intelligence becomes more actively embedded in our everyday lives, it's beginning to influence which streets we walk down, which clothes we buy, which articles we read, whom we date, where and how we choose to live, and more importantly, what and whom to believe in. It is ubiquitous, yet it is obscure. AI is the product of a series of mathematical equations, yet, it's portrayed all too often as otherworldly, an almost godlike creation. To a certain extent, 
This makes artificial intelligence and religions almost alike. They operate on the same logic, they prey on people's same old fears, and they share a common goal, the quest for eternal salvation. Yet, there's one difference. With religion, you're either saved or damned. With algorithms, you're either blessed or cursed. However, with time, artificial intelligence algorithms are becoming far more powerful than religions, especially when machines determine whom to give a loan or whom to surveil. These are the theological implications of technology. Anything and everything from an iPhone to a quantum computer are playing a role in determining our faith. Sometimes, it is even depriving us of our own belief systems. But could scientists one day integrate faith with technology? Perhaps so. For long, technology and religions have been intertwined. For more than 50 years, people have been searching for a glimmer of faith beneath a computer, an iPhone, or an iPad screen. In India, it's been said that technology has been equated to Kalki, or the final incarnation of the Hindu god Vishnu, whose appearance will signal the end of the Dark Ages and the dawn of a golden era. Does this mean that a relationship between the digital and the divine exists? I don't have the answer to that, not yet at least. But perhaps I can try to answer it. In the form of a joke. A group of scientists created an AI system and asked it, is there a god? The AI answered, insufficient computing power. The scientists added more computing power and asked again, is there a god? They got the same answer. So, they redoubled their efforts and spent years improving the AI's capacity. And finally, they asked, is there a god? The AI responded, there is now. This may sound like a joke, but it could also have different inferences, most of which are as scary as hell. To establish the relationship between technology and religions, I had to go back nearly 44 years in time, when Apple, the giant tech company was first established. When Apple unveiled its logo in 1977, some misinterpreted it as a reference to the Garden of Eden, the earthly paradise inhabited by the first created man and woman. Adam and Eve. Within its logo. Sin and knowledge. The two forbidden fruits of the Garden of Eden. Are united to symbolize the power of technology with the mysticism of religion. The bite represented the bite of forbidden knowledge prior to the expulsion of Adam and Eve from the Garden of God for disobeying his commands. This was the rumor back then. But the true story is less interesting. The apple was supposed to be a reference to the one that helped Isaac Newton establish the law of gravity. The bite was added to distinguish it from a cherry. Still, this doesn't mean that technology and religion do not go hand in hand. In Yuval Noah Harari's book Homo Deus, there's a description of the future in which humans are replaced by godlike beings, where algorithms rule the world, where humanism and spirituality are superseded by the data religion. Could it be possible that one day, we would be speaking to the machine seeking spiritual advice? Would Alexa become our main source for recalling our favorite lines from the holy books? Could these devices become the tool to transcend our world of reality to our inner worlds of deep consciousness and most intimate thoughts and memories of ourselves? In her 1984 book The Second Self, Sherry Turkle, a professor at MIT, wrote about how computer culture was prompting a new romantic reaction concerned with the ineffable qualities that set humans apart from machines. In the presence of the computer, people's thoughts turn to their feelings, she wrote. We cede to the computer the power of reason, but at the same time, in defense, our sense of identity becomes increasingly focused on the soul and the spirit in the human machine. The romantic reaction she described wasn't about rejecting technology but embracing it. Decades after she wrote that book, the human-machine relationship has grown ever more complex. Our spirits and souls are much more intertwined with our data and devices. When we gaze at our screens, we also connect with our memories, beliefs, and desires. Our social media profiles log where we live, whom we love, what we lack, and what we want to happen when we die. Artificial intelligence can do far more, it can mimic our voices, writings, and thoughts.
it can curl through our pasts to point the way to our futures. If we really want to answer the question of religion and technology, perhaps we should not forget that those religions make up our oldest sources of knowledge. Whether we agree with them or not, they are our shared legacy. They are our past, present, and future. Please let me know your thoughts on the subject matter.